Who is the best linebacker in the 2024 NFL Draft? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network, your on. team every locked, day. Locked, 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 locked On. Locked On. Locked On. Locked on Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Landon McCool. You can check him out on Twitter at McCoolBCB. On today's show, we're going to be discussing the top linebacker prospects in the 2024 NFL draft because mm -hmm. it's pretty clear, Landon, that the Cowboys have a lot of interest here. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you know, if the 30 visits are any kind of indication, uh, this is a position that they plan on targeting pretty hard. Uh, and obviously the the kind of glaring holes that the team had left in the depth chart, I think also kind of indicate that as well. You know, the thing is, is though, I mean, we say that like it feels like there's numbers here, uh, but but, you know, they, they definitely just don't have uh, a couple of the types that the, of linebackers yes. that I think that, that Zimmer likes to play with. So really, I, I do feel like we are kind of generally hunting linebackers but i would also say that we might be specifically trying to like hunt you know more kind of a, of a zimmer you know thumper type like a bigger yes. body type uh because i think that that's kind of what this this linebacking room is missing so we're going to discuss edger and cooper peyton wilson and junior colson who all happen to be 30 visits for the dallas cowboys let's start with cooper because for most people this is linebacker one in the class what did you see when you turned on the tape well, he's he's a he's a bigger guy, right? Tall with with good length, uh, good long arms and large hands. He's got room to add weight to his frame. He isn't nearly as big as I, I uh, expected his number to be, uh, just by watching him. And he's two thirty is is was I think a little bit surprising to see, especially after watching his tape. So uh, I got you know, look, he's not the same size, but but and I, and I think you and I talked about this a little bit in the DMs a little bit. I get strong Devin White vibes from him. And That's it, exactly it, my comp as well. I, it, I mean, it, it, and I think I told you that I don't know that I've had a, a more clear one for one uh, 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 comp than anybody else in this in this class, right? Like you watch him, and part of it is because he's wearing number forty five, right? And, but I mean. I think it's not just that though. His game is very, very similar. He does all his best work coming forward, right? He closes on targets in a flash, whether it's coming downhill to meet the runner or seeing a, a crosser enter his zone. Once it's time to move, he he moves very quickly and with violence. Uh, this this skill makes him an incredible blitzer. When on a very specific t uh, assignment, his athleticism really shines through, and you get to see a lot of those testing numbers that. You know, we'll, we saw with the Raz uh, slide that you just put up there. Uh, he has suddenness moving side to side as well. He's uh, useful as a blitzer, but also specifically when jumping gaps uh, on 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 twists and stunts as part of a of a you know blitz package. Uh, you know, the issue I have with him, and honestly, it's the issue I have with Devin White a lot, is that he plays too out of control a lot. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and I think he misses tackles at times because he doesn't gather his feet before striking his targets. Uh, you know, he, he, you'll see him overrun plays because he's, you know, he can't slow down once he sees it and he pulls the trigger. Uh, he's, you know, he, I, 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 I used to call these linebackers, the classic point and shoot kind, right? Like they're not, he's not super instinctual. It no, doesn't feel no, like, no. but if he has a very specific assignment or if he has a very kind of, uh, uh, very like limited keys or it's like this, this, and then go. He's very, very useful because he's so athletic. He's, he's, uh, he doesn't miss a ton of tackles. I mean, I think that the kind of bringing his, his feet together to bear is sort of a, a nitpicky aspect of his tackling. He's not like a huge tackle misser ne necessarily. Uh, but I think he is, you know, a, a guy that if you give him a very specific assignment, if he's, if he's your, uh, a, a gap mugger, 
if he's mm-hmm. your, uh, uh, you know, a blitzer who's working in conjunction with some other folks, I, I think that's where you're really going to get the best out of him. Uh, even, even I'll even say like more, normally you get these kind of guys and they also, uh, uh, struggle in coverage or at least in, in all kinds of coverage. I think that he he showed you something as a as a kind of country zone dropper. Like he's not gonna get involved in a bunch of complex man stuff or man match stuff and be good. But I think as far as dro- dropping into a, a, a zone and, and being able to cover a space, his athleticism really you know kind of shows out there. And, uh, and that shows he... up in the adva- the advanced numbers, by the way. If you look yeah, at PFF, uh, ninety six yeah. percentile coverage grade, forced incompletion percentage, ninety fifth percentile, like. He's not asked to do a lot of like high level coverage things, but mm-hmm. what they asked him to do, he did at a very high level. He's, he's athletic enough to get to where he needs to in the zone. And, and you know, he's enough of a presence that you're not going to want to throw a, a mistimed ball to a running back or a throw a pass high and get your, your, your tight end killed by this guy. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Where does he win? Incredible point and shoot athleticism. Like we mentioned unanswered questions uh, can you slow him down a tick in order to have him play faster and i think that's really the issue at times is that he's playing and his mind is moving at a million miles an hour and you just wish that the game would slow down for him a little bit in order for him to play with more efficiency which i think will make him play faster he reminds me a lot of like what the the old three four uh, teams used to like at like linebacker, like the guys that would just the weak, side, the weak inside linebacker. Yeah, the weak in, yep. the guys that just yep. go and create havoc, right? Like yep. go be athletic, go run full speed into a guard and disrupt the play, like that stuff. He is really really good at, and I, I can see in a Mike Zimmer's defense how he would be really intriguing if you're lining him up, you know, over the center, letting him blitz, and then just dropping back in coverage. My one big concern with him, and this is even before like the pro day numbers came out, I, I felt like he was a little tight in the hips. Like for yeah. being that good of an athlete, you would you would think that he'd be able to sink his hips a little bit better and change directions. And you saw that play out when we had the pro day numbers, like a seven, two, three cone. The agility numbers were good, but they weren't elite, right? Like I was hoping to see a better or more fluid athlete. I didn't see that, but I still really like him because there's not many six foot two 230 pound guys out there that can run and be as physical as he is yeah well you see it right he's he's got kind of longer legs so like he can bounce you know uh horizontally from gap to gap very quickly like that doesn't it looks athletic it doesn't have problems but you're right when you ask him to actually open his hips turn his hips and move it's it's kind of laborious right it's it's not like he's do, flipping his hips uh naturally like a like a cornerback or a db not that he would but you know, it's considering the rest of his athleticism, it's a little bit surprising. And I agree that I tend to think that if you're going to get him in a situation where he's got to play man coverage, it's going to be bad. It's it's not going to be great. Like you don't want him like in, in like a bunch of man coverage, but if you're getting him into a system where he can keep it all in front of him, drop into a Tampa drop or a hook zone or something like that. You know, I feel like he's got good enough eyes and instincts and, and he's just enough of a physical threat that, yeah that uh, he could do that without any problem. I don't know how he differs from like Jamin Davis, who the commanders took, it was at 19 or Quay Walker, who the Packers took in the first round. Like there's yeah. a there, Jordan Brooks, who is another first round linebacker. Mm-hmm. I think he's in the same mold at, as all of those guys, but you might be able to get him a whole round later, which is a lot more appealing to me than spending the 23rd pick in the draft on a, on a linebacker. I, I think once you get to the middle of round two, I think that's where Cooper becomes a good value. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, I think what this is, is that teams have learned their lesson a little bit that, you know, athleticism is fantastic and being able to assign a guy a job and have him do it. That's fantastic. But at a certain point, you're going to need to get into a defense where you're, you're, you're going to have your linebackers, you know, read their keys and, and react appropriately. And, and that's where some of these guys tend to struggle. And, you know, it's 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 a pretty big downside when your, your linebacker is late on reading his run keys. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah I, I I can understand why they you know have learned their lesson and kind of peeled back the the value of these kind of players. A little bit. All right, let's transition to Peyton Wilson, who might be mm-hmm. one of the most fascinating players in the entire 2024 NFL draft. Does he fit Mike Zimmer's defense? We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. 
prices on the game time app actually go down the closer that you get to the first pitch with killer last minute deals, all in prices views from your seat in their lowest price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. You can save up to 60% uh, off buying last minutes for sports, comedy, uh, concerts, theater tickets, whatever you need. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use promo code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem promo code locked on NFL for $20 off. Download the game time to uh, game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Are you having to turn down the volume because of all that unnecessary shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that unnecessary screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Lena, let's talk about Peyton Wilson, who I think it would have been not for the injuries, probably would have been a first round pick. Uh, but what did oh, you yeah. see in the tape? Yeah, I definitely think, you know, uh, he would have been a first round pick. Um, uh, I, I really enjoyed his his tape. You know, uh, he's a he's a taller uh, linebacker for sure. He's almost six four. Uh, but he kind of has average size overall. He's just barely over 230, which, you know, for being almost 6'4", is 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 a little bit light, and I feel like I, he could put some weight on. Uh, he's got below average length. He doesn't necessarily have great arms. He's just over 30-inch arms. Um, and, and if you're gonna if you're gonna have a, a kind of a, a slight against your athleticism, I, I think it's 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 or his you know phys, physicality, it's it's his arm length, right? But it, it really doesn't show very very much on tape at all. Uh, he plays with good anticipation. He gets cues pre-snap and quickly confirms keys and makes his move. Very comfy attacking and defeating blocks. Uh, this is something I was worried about when I saw that length, but he doesn't have the link to keep blockers completely off him, but he is good at getting separated from blocks uh, by using his hands when it's time to shed. We talk about offensive linemen who are sticky blockers, right? The guys that stay on their targets that don't get thrown off he's really good at the opposite of that getting off blocks right like being blocked and then getting off of them and then making the play uh height helps uh give him good vision into the backfield he can see through the trash likely able to get through multiple keys quickly post snap because he can cleanly see into the backfield with his height anybody who's played linebacker before or has been short and played linebacker before can talk about the kind of parallax effect that happens in front of your eyes when different shifts of bodies are moving in opposite directions. It's a mess. It's hard to look through. And if you're not tall, sometimes it's hard to see through that mess, especially on counters or plays where you have offensive linemen going multiple directions uh, and, and see where the ball carrier is going. So uh, having that height, I think, is an actually an advantage at times uh, for some things like that. Uh, despite his height, he's comfortable with space. Uh, he can move in almost every direction with burst. Uh, and and they took advantage of that in North Carolina State. I mean, he was basically the whole defense for NC State. I mean, he lined up inside, all the way outside. I'm pretty sure I saw him lined up as a free safety at one point. He's used as a blitzer. He dropped into coverage when lined up at the line of scrimmage. Uh, he he was you know making all the stops. That's what I keep my notes keep talking about. He's he's doing everything here. Uh, he's got yeah. good upper body control. He can bend and contort to get uh, through and around blockers as a blitzer and or, or as a run defender. Very good hand-eye coordination. <laughs> That's the thing that was kind of fun to see after watching him for a little bit longer is, uh, uh, you know, you, you see him catch interceptions with his palms out. I, I saw him pick up a fumble on a one bounce while running at full speed, which is which was pretty impressive. You don't see very often. Uh, you don't see, my, my kind of last note here was, you don't see too many truly elite athletes at the position who also excel at block shedding the way he does. He, he really is kind of a dying breed of linebacker. Yeah. You just don't see these yeah. guys very much. Where does he win? He's an athletic, heady linebacker with a uniquely balanced skill set. You just don't see, like I said, you don't see guys with this level of athleticism that are skilled at getting off blocks. Um, unanswered questions without a doubt. I mean, I think this is the thing we're going to talk about with them is, 
health and age. You know, he's he's an older prospect because he's he's had surgeries. He's you know he's had problems. I'm pretty sure he's had like, isn't it like double digit? Yeah, surgeries? it's double digit and, surgeries. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's that's obviously a huge issue. But as far as the tape goes, he's one of the most complete linebackers I've watched in a little while. Like he's he really is. Like he's got every aspect you want, and he's where he's at least good at it. Uh, and in some aspects, he's he's great at, at so at, at things. So uh, just a very kind of unique player. And, and honestly, I can see why people are uh, patient through a lot of the injury and age stuff because he he is a, a unique player. And if you're looking for something like him, uh, he doesn't come along very often. No, no. Uh, before we kind of dog him for the, some of the stuff that maybe is out of his control a little bit. I do want to mention some of the advanced stats really good in coverage. Uh, 94th percentile coverage grade. The run defense stuff is also amazing. 96th percentile run defense grade, 99th percentile run stop percentage. And then you, you mentioned that there's not a lot of length there. He's got pretty short arms, but he just doesn't miss tackles. 97th percentile in missed tackle percentage. All those numbers are absolutely outstanding. I think if you're just grading him based on film, he's a first round player. You, if you're grading him off of athleticism, uh, you're seeing it on your screen right now. If you're watching uh, with us on YouTube, he's a 98th percentile athlete. Like he's he's flying four four three at 233 pounds. Like that's ridiculous. But where do you take a linebacker that has had double digit surgeries and is 24 right now? I think he'll be 25 early next off season. You already kind of don't want to pay linebackers a second contract because of all the abuse that their body takes. But where do you – can you even think about giving a 28-year-old linebacker another contract considering his injury history? He's basically going to be a one-contract player for you and at a position that's just not very valuable right now in the NFL. I don't know – I have no idea where he should be drafted or where he's going to get drafted. I've, I've got no clue. Come on, man. You, it felt like the more you talked about it there, the, you were going to answer your own question. The obvious place to take him, especially as a Dallas Cowboys fan, is the second round. That's I know, I know. But that's, I, I've been <laughs> scarred so many times by this. It's just, would I rather just draft a 21-year-old linebacker who has less wear and tear on his body who, yeah, might not be the athlete, might not have the same upside, but I just know it's going to last through the rookie deal. I, I again, I really, really like Peyton Wilson. And if it wasn't for the injury stuff, like you could legitimately talk to me about drafting him at 24, but unfortunately, like he just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I can't clear him for, for, for football activities, unfortunately. And, and that's the issue with a lot of these prospects is that we don't have medical teams here on the locked on Cowboys podcast. So we, we've, we've not yet a couple of, we've contacted a couple of doctors and they didn't accept our, our salary offers. Uh, no. but, uh, yeah, you know, look, it's uh, to me, um, I, we have to see what the doctors say about him, right? Like, because you watch with tape, you watch what he did athletically. He's a rare specimen. There's a reason yeah. that he's in this yeah. conversation. There's a reason that like everyone's very fully aware of how many surgeries this guy had. And, and if he, uh, uh, was anything less than he is as a football player, as an athlete, this wouldn't be a conversation. This, you know, this guy would be no, medically no. off of everyone's board. However, because of the, the rarity and because of, of the way he plays, uh, I, I think that he's definitely obviously going to get drafted and he's going to get drafted high. So, and there's a chance uh, he's still the first linebacker taken because his tape is that good. Absolutely. And, and frankly, the rest of the linebacking group is not that great. So, um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have a problem taking him in the second round, uh, because I, I don't have to medically clear him or take responsibility when sure. he doesn't play football in three years. So, but I, I think that, you know, that's just kind of my tape grade, obviously. Um, I think if, if, if you're giving me, uh, you know, let's say you're giving me kind of Leighton Vander Esch odds, right. On, on, on on this guy, which I think, you know, is a, is a, is a pretty apt comparison. He's the guy he's, 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 you know, replacing he's, it's a similarly dire situation. I don't know if it's life altering, like, like no. Leighton Vander Esch's potential stuff could be, but uh, I think it's probably similar odds. I, I may take that same deal again, except in the second round, right? Because, you know, there's a chance that he doesn't uh, play a long career and that he has just a kind of a shortened situation. Late Vanderesh got a second contract from the Cowboys third, and a third contract, and a third. Yeah. yeah. Um, but th there's always a chance that you get John Lee 
you know <laughs> and like you know that was the name that we kept on talking about yep. in, in the dms when we yep. talked about his kind of preternatural instincts and his and his and his you know uh, way to identify things so i you know i could i have no problem taking him in the second round without <laughs> sight unseen without knowing his medicals sure uh sure. but i understand that like if the cowboys pass on him it's probably because they know a lot more about what's going on with his his legs than i do all right so landon there's always a player or two in a draft where i just can't figure them out for oh, one man. reason or another i just have no feel that's Junior Colson for me, and I can't wait to hear what you think about the linebacker for Michigan. We will get to that next. Hmm. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's the first thing that you'd do if you had an extra hour in your day? Would you go for a run? Would you take a nap? Would you read a book? A lot of us spend our lives wishing that we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can go and do more of it. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for any reason at no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off your first month. That is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We are breaking down the top linebackers in the 2024 NFL Draft. And that leads us to Junior Colson, who mm -hmm. the Cowboys have a 30 visit with. I believe he met with the team on Sunday. I know a lot of people out there have Colson as their number one linebacker, including, I believe, PFF. Uh, I think Mel Kuyper Jr. also has Colson as number one. Um, what did you think of Junior Colson when you watched this tape? Yeah, I think I kind of agree with you a little bit there, Marcus. Uh, I, I liked him. I mean, I think he's okay, but I, I think he's being you know hyped up a lot. And I think that a lot of it has to do with the fact that you know, he's the starting middle linebacker for the championship defense, and he's a leader of that defense. And I think that that has value without a doubt, but, you know, I think it's maybe artificially uh, heightening his his draft stock. But let's let's get into the numbers a little bit. You know, he's got really good size. Like, I like he's got good height, and he's just over 6'2", with a filled-out frame. He's the closest to, to 240 of all three of these guys, uh, and, and he has that kind of, oomph to his game without a doubt he is a downhill mike type has plenty of athleticism to slide from b gap to b gap uh, but less so when asked to kind of open up his hips and run sideline to sideline in that sense he's sort of similar uh to cooper that we talked about a little while ago mm -hmm. i would say that cooper definitely has more general athleticism than than, than colson does though uh by by quite a bit um yeah, he fills the gap strongly, and that's honestly, I think, his his biggest strength. He meets running backs in the hole and offensive linemen and blunts their momentum. He's he's good at kind of uh, absorbing uh, contact inside and 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 pushing it back. Uh, he has some great box traits, uh, but I worry about his role the further away from the football he gets. Um, he seems more, like I said, he seems more athletic than a typical inside linebacker. Like the guy, he seems more athletic than this type of linebacker that he is. Sure. But he, he it's not like a, really enough to kind of expand his role outside of him being, uh, a, a, you know, kind of a thumper inside linebacker type. Uh, obviously, very willing to stick his nose in the pile and then try to move it. I mean, he's just, he has no fear about any kind of physicality or mixing it up in that way. Good in country zone drops, but doesn't quite have the athleticism to cover tight ends or running backs in man coverage. I mean, you saw it a couple of times where he just kind of gets left in the dust out after a couple of yards. If it goes, you know, further than outside the tackles, if something breaks, uh, he sees it, reacts well, but he doesn't always have the speed to get there. I, I there is definitely one play where the the play ran. It was a run play to the opposite side of his where he was in the formation. He saw it all really well. It took a step right on time opened up his hips and, and like the reaction was all great 
but he just couldn't get there. I think it was against Penn State. He just couldn't get to the corner. Yeah, he just doesn't have that kind of athleticism to get yeah, there. Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't beat the running back to the alley and he couldn't get there in time, right? And, and he wasn't in a good body position to make a tackle. And, and it'll go down as a missed tackle, but I don't think it was a tackling problem. I think it was a not athletic to get his body into position to make the tackle problem, right? Uh, he's, he's a strong communicator. I mean, that's the one thing you will see in, in, his, in his tape is that especially in these cut up stuff that you see uh, you're always the beginning of the snap is always him. Like with his hands, like, you know, telling somebody something and then getting himself lined up. So he's clearly the guy that's kind of getting everybody aligned and is the communicator and is the one making sure that, that everyone's lined up properly. And obviously Michigan did that at a very high rate and very well. So he, uh, you know, obviously should get some bonus points for that as well. There is more upside to him as a block shedder. I do feel like he could use his length a bit more consistency consistently to keep himself clean. I mean, he has good length. He doesn't seem to use it very well. So I definitely think he could use his length a little bit more to kind of even become even better at, at uh, uh, shedding blocks, which is you know pretty impressive. Where does he win? Solid between the B gaps operator. Uh, you know, he's uh, to me, he's a Mike only, right? I, I mean, yeah. I just, I, yeah. I, he's not a run and chase linebacker necessarily. Like I want him moving forward. I want him attacking the line of scrimmage. I want him attacking blocking schemes, uh, unanswered questions. Is he a Mike only? I think that I answered my own yeah. question. Does he have third down value? I, I really don't see it. Like, I mean, I think even, uh, even I think the, the PFF grade kind of shows this here. I think as a blitzer, he can do some things, uh, you know, kind of in conjunction with folks. But I don't know that he's necessarily that skilled as a pass rusher uh, or, no, or anything no. like that. So because he, he goes back to kind of needy getting better with his hands and using his length more. So for me, there was a couple of things like I really liked him as a run defender. I think he's very, yeah. very solid. Like and you can like this is the type of linebacker the Cowboys yes. probably need, like somebody yes. who can take on guards, make tackles, don't miss tackles. Like there's a lot of yeah. value in that, but man, there's other things like I watch his tape and it's, it feels very like it's good, but it's not outstanding. Like there's nothing on his tape that makes me go like, Whoa, like what? Look yeah. at this play where at least, I mean, I know they're totally different players, but Edger and Cooper and Peyton yeah. Wilson both had several wow. of those. plays. Yeah. yeah. Why, Colson just doesn't have those. Um, he reminds me a lot of, like the current version of Nick Bolton with the chiefs where it's okay. You're, you're a downhill thumper and in the right games, you can look awesome and other games you can get played right, right off the field. And that's kind of yeah. been the case for Nick Bolton, just depending on the game that you watch, it can drastically uh, change your opinion on him. My other question for him is, so we saw last year, we saw Mozzie Smith and Schoonmaker both enter the NFL with injuries, right? Like they were just so beat up at Michigan. And now going into year two, those guys are both coming off surgeries. Now, Junior Colson didn't go to the senior bowl because he was dealing with general soreness from the set of the season, hurt his hamstring in kind of pre-draft training, didn't do anything at the combine, didn't do anything at the pro day. Like, so we have no numbers on him. I just worry about like some of these Michigan players, the way that I used to worry about Alabama players. Alabama, being, I was just going to bring it yeah, up. Yeah, just being so beat up by the time they get to the NFL. And Colson's played three full years at Michigan. Yeah, played a lot. Like, is he going to just be this in the NFL? I, I hate the helmet scout, but it, these guys do. I mean, Harbaugh had them going through wars basically every single game. How beat up is he already coming into the league? Well, and, you know, look, I mean, much like a lot of these other Alabama players, too, how many times do we see these guys who were freshman All-Americans, right, that got, like, huge hype early on and then, you know, finished their career doing good stuff? I mean, obviously, he won the national title last year and he's the captain of that defense. But, mm -hmm. you know, he, he wasn't, like, uh, uh, you know, changing the world out there necessarily with his play. He was a very solid, a huge part of that defense, without a doubt. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily make you a uh, uh, a first rounder, you know, no. or a, a second no. rounder. I think my issue with 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 Colson is I like Colson a lot, and I think he's a great fit for what the Cowboys need. But my problem is, is that I'm hearing his name being talked about like he's linebacker one, or that he's like a third or second round pick. I I think this guy is like a late third, fourth round pick, just because he's not like he's I have a, a third really. On him. What'd you say? I have a third on him. Like yeah, that's where I, I get I, comfortable I, drafting him. 
I, I think because he's a really, really good run defender who can do some early down passing stuff, you know, not get you beat. But I mean, I don't have a role for him on third down necessarily right now. And I, I don't know that I'm going to in the future. So I think he's kind of limited in that sense. He's a good piece for what you're looking for specifically. But I, I think I'm concerned that he's going to get overdrafted and that he's going to get pushed up but beyond where you can get him. Uh, and that's, you know, that's my issue with Colson is that I feel like, yeah, he's a great fit for what the Cowboys ha- want. Uh, and I think I would love to have him on the team but I don't want to have to spend the 56th pick to nope. get him by any stretch of the imagination. So really quickly, before we go, can you stack these three linebackers in order for how you would take them for the Cowboys? I mean, I kind of think that it's Wilson Cooper Colson for me. You know, I, I think even with, even with the injury stuff, like I might take a chance that I only get four years of Wilson or maybe even three years of Wilson. And I, and I feel like that may be better than, than four years of Cooper, you know, like yeah. obviously you have the chance of kind of re, you know, re-signing Cooper, which you may not get that same option with Wilson. But uh, I feel like if at linebacker, it's like running back, right? Like, I don't know that I want to sign him to a second contract anyways. Your best production is probably going to come on that initial contract at that point. And if you're asking me who is going to play better on that rookie contract, if they're healthy, Peyton Wilson is like a, a, a head and shoulders above these other two guys, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm I'm Cooper Wilson Colson just because I think Cooper it, it quite a bit younger, quite a bit healthier, yeah, and that, sure. it just matters to me a little bit. Um, but I would be very happy with either. Like if either player it falls to the Cowboys at pick 56, I would be absolutely thrilled with either of them. So two really good linebackers in this class, and the one that we can't quite figure out. That's about par for the course. Uh, mm-hmm. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Lockdown Cowboys your first listen every single day. Tune into the channel on YouTube. We post videos every single day over there. Download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.